All right. So I want to first start off by saying that I am in no way, shape, or form an expert. I'm not a zoologist, a biologist, a herpetologist, or anything like that. I'm just in the hobby. I enjoy these animals. Um, I'm going to try to show some of the simple, in my opinion, easy ways to tell the difference between a boa imperator and a boa constrictor, where a BI or BC um, was more commonly known as BCI and BCC. I believe they recently changed it. They dropped the constrictor and the BCI because they are now considered their own species, or it's in the works to consider them their own species. But uh, I'm going I'm to just show you the basic differences between the two. That way, when it comes down to some of the basic husbandry needs that are a little different, such as feeding, feeding being the big one, uh, temperature, humidity, and just, just overall purchase. When you purchase these animals, you don't get you know, taken advantage of because you don't know exactly what you're looking for or what you're buying. This is 007. He is a male boa imperator. The boa imperator comes from the west side of the Andes mountain range and it starts in South America, their range, and goes into Central America and Mexico. The Andes Mountain is sort of like a natural barrier between the two separate species, between BI and BC. But he is a boa imperator. I'm going to show you some things that I look for when I'm trying to tell the difference. Um, now, these are all going to be variable. I'm just going to say that now. Yes, I know that there's different localities. I know there's different subspecies. I, I, I understand that. I know everything I'm saying at some point. There can be an example to prove the opposite of what I'm saying, but in general, with a common wild type boa imperator and a common wild type Surinams or Baganas or Peruvians, how they would be found in the wild, this is going to be the more generalized way to tell the difference. So I'm going to start with the tail. As you can see, he's got a brownish orange tail. His tail is browned out. It is not maroon or red or burgundy. In some cases, yes, they will have red tails. But you can tell right here, brownish, oranges. His background coloring along the body, tan, browns, black, and the saddles. And the saddles also can be variable, but normally when I see bow imperators, for the most part, they have what looks like a bow tie for a saddle. This isn't always the case, but as you can see right here, this is a saddle. Kind of looks like a bow tie. Orange, browned out tail, bow tie. When you come up to the head, the heads on the bow imperators are a little smaller. You'll see when I pull out a BC that the heads are a little different. Um, some people go by the head spear. I, I don't really try to go by that. that. That one can be very variable. A lot of mine have the full or prominent head spear. Um, that could be because of a cross. You could have a cross or some BC blood. Uh, the thing with the bow imperators, a lot of them are not pure. Uh, the pet trade had a lot of people... Or a lot of breeders back in the day just mixing whatever they can mix to get animals. And then, you know, with shipments coming in from wherever, not really things being kept track of, you know, there are mixes. So, but I don't really use the head spear, but one of the generalized uh, ways some people tell is that the head spear on a bee eye will be a little more broken up. It won't be so prominent. It normally stops around the eyes. It's not as clear. He's got a pretty prominent one, so. But... A good thing that I look for on BCs that BIs normally don't have, there are no eyelash markings. You see right here above his eye, there's nothing there. I'll show you what that looks like on a BC, but no eyelash markings. Head spear can be variable, so I'm not going to use that one, but you know what it looks like now. Bow tie saddles, browns, blacks, tans for coloring. And orange browned out tail. Okay, so here we have a BCC or a BC, a boa constrictor. This would be the true red tail boa, not a boa imperator. Start right off where we left off with the eye. Eyelash markings, you can see them right there, right above the eyes. He has a very prominent head spear, which is what I was talking about with the last the boa imperator. It's not really a telltale sign, but normally the Surinams or your true red tails, your BCs, will have this. Um, BCs come from the east side of the Andes mountain range, more of the Amazon basin. You have your Suriname, Guyana, French Guiana, Ecuador. Colombia does have true red tails. Um, Peru, just some examples. Yeah, eyelash marks, head sphere. 
the saddles are going to be different. As you can see, they're not looking at bow ties, but they have little peaks. Now this is also variable. It's going to be the same thing as the BI. Everything can be variable, but peaks in the saddles. Peaks in the saddles. Some people say they look like bat wings from Batman, or some people say they look like uh, puzzle pieces. And then the telltale, which also can be variable, but this is what people look for or want in a true red tail. This red, burgundy, maroon tail. So, eyelash marks, bat wings, red tail. Go over to the Imperator. You should be able to see the difference between the two. Okay, so here I have two boas. Um, now you can classify them all as boas. They are all boas. But scientifically, the scientific names are different. They are two different species. And, and if you can't look, I mean, you should be able to look right here. Just this is what I'm looking at. And then boa imperator, boa constrictor. You should be able to see that visually. Um, come on, get down. Get down. Let's see. Browned out, orange tail, maroon. Red tail, bow ties, bat wings, eyelashes, no eyelashes. All right, reasons that you should know the difference. These guys right here, the boa imperator, imperators, are a lot more forgiving. Um, not so much. BC, you got to be a lot more dialed in on your temperatures, humidity, all that. Um, I'm not going to really get into the numbers on what your temperatures are going to be at because everyone's going to say something different. It all depends on your research and how you want to keep your animals. And if you go off of the natural climate or you just keep everything the same year round, some people keep their Imperators and their BCs exactly the same, which is fine if their animals are thriving in those conditions. Um, mine are a little different. Heating, for the most part, is generally the same. My humidity, I do keep the humidity a little higher for my BCs. That's just me. Um, main thing would be feeding these animals right here like i said they are more forgiving now i'm not saying you should power feed or overfeed or anything like that but if you feed a little bit larger prey item than you think you should have normally these guys can handle it and it won't affect them as long as you're not doing it over and over and over again um spreading out their feeding times they'll be okay these the bc on the other hand they have to have time you have to give them time to digest you cannot overfeed you cannot feed anything that's too big. Their metabolisms are slower and their stomachs are weaker. They cannot handle it. They will regurgitate. They will regurgitate on you multiple times and they will die if you do not get the feeding and the prey items dialed in how they're supposed to be. These are slow growing animals. These are not pythons. You can't just feed them like a garbage disposal. Even though they want to be fed that way, they are opportunistic eaters, but you need to feed them slowly every two weeks on, on smaller snakes. You can, you can vary your feeding schedules later. Like I said, I really don't want to get into it because it's going to be different for everybody. But you need to give them time to digest. Whereas these guys are going to forgive you a little more. They can handle it. Um, another thing is price. This animal right here, I can go to a website or an expo from somebody I trust. I can buy this snake for $50 to $75 all day. Or just a normal wild type animal. These, just a normal wild type animal with no paperwork or anything... You can probably find from maybe not the most reputable places, but you can probably find it for 250 bucks. Um, you start getting into animals without paperwork um, that you could tell or it looks like a certain animal, people are going to charge you 300, 400 bucks. It varies. Now you start getting lines from reputable breeders, and you're going to start paying money, 500 and above. And if you really get into the pure, pure stuff where people have all their paperwork and everything else, I mean, we, we could be talking a $1,200 snake. And this is just on the BC side. Now, I know it gets different with the Imperators. Once you get into morphs and all that and the rarities and the mutations, it changes, but we're not getting to that. Wild type, 50 bucks. Maybe a little higher. Wild type, we'll say 250 to 500 is fair. Without paperwork, with paperwork, you're looking at 500 or above. Now, if you go to these big chain stores like Petco, PetSmart, even your local stores, this is more than likely what you're going to see. But do not get fooled by them trying to sell it as this because they will they will call this a Colombian red tail boa they will call this a red tail boa all day in the pet trade and they will try to charge you 150 to 200 dollars do not fall for it this is a imperator this is a bc do not get suckered into paying 
the price of this snake for this snake. Now I'm not downplaying this snake in any way. This is a beautiful snake. It's just not worth what this is. This is why you need to know the differences. Now this is Lilith. This is just another example of a Boa Imperator. She is a little older. She's around two years old. As you can see, head spears a little broken up on her. Not the best example. A lot of mine have prominent head spears. Um, like I said, it's all variable. It's not really a good sign. No eyelash marks. That one is. You can see she doesn't really have the bow ties. She has a few, but her, her saddles are all different. Variation, which is fine. It's going to happen. Even some of the BCs have aberrant patterns, but you can tell just by looking at the color of this animal and the tail, browned out, oranges, not red, burgundy. Now, unfortunately, the, the only way to be 100% sure is to basically go in the wild, pick your animal up from that location and be like, okay, yeah, this is a Colombian, or this is a Suriname, or this is a Guyana. But most people don't have the means of doing that. So you have to rely on what it was imported in as, which, you know, a few years ago, it wasn't always the, the case of, oh, it was found in Suriname, but it was imported from Guyana, or the opposite. It, it, it's hard to tell. Um, and this is all across the board. This isn't just BC or Bo Imperator. They're, they're, you got, you're at the discretion of what they, they want to send you. And then you have to go off of the breeders. You have some breeders that are all about keeping things as pure as possible, which is fine. Honestly, I think that's how it should be. You should be trying to keep them as pure as to what they are in the wild as you can. Now, when you get into morphs, of course, it's going to be different. It's a whole other story. We're not going to get into morphs. I do enjoy the morphs. But it's impossible to tell, honestly. If you have a good breeder who keeps good records and tracks things of where he got them, that's what you can go by. That's the best thing you can go by. He should be able to tell you how old it is, when it was born, what the parents were, what kind of mutations, genes they held, and where it came from. It's not always the case, but that is the best way of knowing exactly what your animal is, hoping that you have a, uh, a good breeder. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope that you can now visually at least be able to tell the difference. You should be able to tell that this is a BC. Um, it's like I said, it's going to be variable. Some people aren't going to agree with what I'm saying or how I'm saying it. Um, it. It is what it is, but you should be able to tell the difference between the wild types, not the morphs or anything like that. Another thing, if it's a morph, just go ahead and call it a bow imperator because like 95% of the time, that's what it's going to be. Some, there are some other subspecies that have naturally occurring hypomelanism or albinism, but we're not getting into that. We're strictly imperator and BC.